Hey y'all, Johnny Mullet here with another update on the bus build. I got a couple little updates for you. I want to touch bases with a few things and let's go check them out right now. First off is the shower. So here I have the instant propane hot water shower mounted on the back of the bus. So this way we can open the back door and basically we hook the propane hose to propane and I have a garden hose running into the shower. So if we want a nice hot shower, all we got to do is basically turn it on. So right now I have the water at max and I have the heat. We're going to turn this up to max. I have two D batteries in here for the igniter and this is the water shutoff valve that I installed and this hose goes into the shower which is inside the bus. So I think the propane is on. Let me check real quick and see. Okay, now the propane is on. The water is now on. So let's go in the shower and turn it on and see what happens. Okay, right now we are inside the bus and I am in the shower. So if I turn this on, it's going to start flowing water. Um, let's see what happens. Ow. Oh well. There we go. Wow, and it's already getting hot. That's uh, pretty impressive. That is already getting hot. Unbelievable. Pretty good pressure. Now, I'm not going to get in and get all naked and stuff, you know, to get my YouTube viewers and subscribers up. But anyway, I, I like that. Alright, so we'll shut that off. And I guess I will go uh, turn it off. I'm happy with that. That's awesome. Good deal. So we do have a working shower. Okay, that is great news, but the not so great news is I had a little bit of a water leak. So I put this plastic fitting in and it has a shutoff valve. I'm going to probably change this to a brass one because this was like really cheap and I can tell by the quality, you know, it's, it's, it's probably going to be a problem. So I think it's best to go ahead and change that out. So this was the maiden voyage of the shower. So, you know, testing and, you know, making sure everything works. That's important. So I don't smell any propane. There's no propane leaks. Uh, the propane vented out of the top. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a metal shield up in here to deflect the propane gases out the back of the bus. And that will be 100% complete. So we'll go ahead and uh, shut this propane off. There we go. And I can go ahead and unhook it. And that's all there is to it. And besides unhooking the uh, propane, you unhook the old garden hose. I'll clean up this water here later. And then you can close the door, you're all done. I can just uh, wrap this hose right up and get it right out of the way where you don't have to worry about it, just like it was when I started. Perfect. Uh, one thing I did want to share with you guys is there has been a delay in getting the bus pressure washed and painted. They just put a fresh layer of tar and chip on our road. And for the last week, every vehicle that goes by leaving a big cloud of dust. So everything's like really dirty and dusty. So as soon as this settles down, I'll go ahead and... Uh, We'll get that bus pressure washed and we'll get her painted. Look at that nice clean engine. Um, I had a power steering leak. It was, 
I don't know, I couldn't figure it out. I thought it might have been a line or it might have been the power steering box itself. It turns out that right here, if you take and thread this out, there is a poppet and a spring inside. And I couldn't find a replacement, so I went ahead and I took it out and I took it to work and my buddy went ahead and he welded it right here. The problem was, you can see where the weld is, the metal was like really thin and a pinhole formed and every time I turned the steering wheel a little fluid would shoot out and you could probably see where it's been squirting on my brakes and down on the axle. So at least that's now fixed. We don't have to worry about the power steering leak anymore. Wanted to show you all a little addition I got. Um, a friend of mine made me this sign. So I think a couple of video go, videos ago I was saying uh, like the sign in a bathroom should say home is where you make it. You know that little quote from Joe Dirt. Well, I told him what I wanted and this is all handmade. He made that just for me in the bus. So he did a very nice job. I think it's cool. It looks good. I like it. It really, you know, it matches the interior of the bus. So I got to go back here and straighten up my shower mess. It's not too bad. I banged my head on the shower curtain there. But the shower works and I like it. And another thing is I can take that head off of that shower hose, pull the hose through and have an outdoor shower also. So it'll work either way. You guys knew it was coming. I'm going to sit right here and we're going to do story time. So first off, let me grab a ice cold beer from the fridge. It's a hot one today. I should have just went ahead and jumped in that shower, you know. I could have whipped it off and been all like, I'm in the shower in my schoolie. <laughs> Maybe later. Maybe later. Anyway, we've been having a blast in the bus. Uh, I just wanted to share with you guys, man, we've been, every weekend, we'd go somewhere either camping or boondocking. And today, we actually went to uh, Thompson's Raceway Park in Thompson, Ohio, which is a, it's a drag strip, you know, for racing cars. And there's this uh, group called Fat Man's Invasion. And basically, it's a bring what you got car show. It's a really laid back atmosphere. If you want to run your vehicle down the racetrack, go for it. Um, I did not run the bus down the racetrack, but I did pay the 10 bucks to get in. Me and the old lady set out the chairs on the side, uh, parked in a nice little spot, and uh, I had a sign on the front of the bus that says, check out the bus, and another sign on the side that says, step on in, and I think we had over 100 people in and out of the bus. Everyone absolutely loved it and uh it got a lot of attention so that was pretty cool um everyone was asking questions about the solar system and the power and stuff like that and that's one of the points i wanted to talk about in this video was i'm seeing a lot of builds out there where you guys are building your bus and you're putting five six seven thousand watts of solar panels on your roof you're running house wiring 110 volt lights and appliances and building your bus like a house and in order to do that it's going to require lots of solar panels lots of batteries i'm talking you know 10 16 20 batteries to run all that juice and not only that the power inverter has to be large enough to run all your stuff you are talking you know six seven eight thousand watts and i don't understand why people do that I built this bus entirely on 12 volt except for the refrigerator. The refrigerator is the only thing that runs off the power inverter. So I have a 1500 watt inverter, no problem running the fridge, I can run a pot of coffee with a coffee maker, I can run, you know, a couple small 110 volt appliances, but we don't. We don't run anything off of there except the refrigerator and the coffee pot. And that's a one time thing with the coffee pot. I have had no problems with two 100 watt panels. So 200 watts, that's all I got. 
and I have two 6 volt golf cart batteries wired in series that gives me 12 volts and 235 amp hours of juice. So the power inverter and fridge, that's the biggest energy hog. Those items basically draw the most power. But a 12 volt refrigerator, some of them really aren't large enough. And I mean, there are some larger models, but they're very expensive. So I think, you know, the payoff between the power inverter and a nice apartment size or house size refrigerator, it works for us. Um, if I have everything on in the bus, every light, TV, stereo, water pump, and I have everything turned on, I draw about 8 amps. The power inverter and the refrigerator alone draw between 6 and 8 amps, depending on if the compressor is running. So you got to think that just the refrigerator and power inverter alone is pretty much takes up just as much juice as everything else. So the 12 volt refrigerator thing, you know, that could work for us down the road if anything ever happens with this one. But of course we wouldn't be able to store as much food, as much water, or, you know, beer, the necessities. So we had a blast at the Raceway Park. Um, last weekend we went boondocking up by Lake Erie. We had a good time. Basically cooked a meal, watched some TV, watched the sunset on the lake. Wonderful time. Um, I told you earlier about the road, a lot of dust flying. Um, I got some body work pretty much caught up. Um, all the holes I showed you in the last video on the hood are filled in. A lot of the clear coat is now sanded. On the back I got a little bit more Bondo work to do and then I want to pressure wash the bus. But I did take the bus to a local car wash, had a big enough bay for the bus and I spent like 10 bucks to wash the bus. And it came out nice. I mean, it, it looked clean because it was really dirty from the road, you know, being fresh tar and chip. And I wanted to make sure it was clean for the car show. I mean, it's not a show car, but, you know, it looked really good. But I noticed that I put the pressure washer right up against some of the dirt that's, like, really embedded, especially up high. And uh, it's not taking it off that good. So the other option would be for me to climb up on the roof bucket of water and a scrub brush and elbow grease and scrub it that way and then use a hose and that would clean a lot of the embedded dirt out of the old paint and then I can give it a light scuffing and we're going to go ahead and get this thing painted. I'm running out of time because it's already the end of August so I'm thinking if I don't have this bus painted by the end of September it's not going to get done. So number one goal, get this thing painted. I mean, we're having fun in it. Every weekend we're doing something with it. It's a blast. But it's time to let's get this thing painted because I don't want to have any problems on our trip to Scully Palooza in January. That's the most important thing. So, anywho, the shower works. I got my cool home is where you make it sign. Uh, power steering leak is fixed. I do have a small oil leak. Um, let me show you that. Before I let you go, um, down here on the floorboard, it's kind of hard to see because I cleaned it, but there is a wet spot. You can see it now. See that wet spot right there? At first, I thought my power steering leak was right there. And this has a Hydro Boost um, power steering system, but I looked up inside and, you know, there was no power steering fluid coming out of the back of the brake pedal area. But I can clearly see the oil right here. You know, that's so you know, I gave it a whiff and wow, that's engine oil. Engine oil? Why would there be engine oil leaking up here? So I got to looking and believe it or not, the I don't know if you can see it right there is the oil pressure gauge. And this bus is old school. And it literally has a small tube that runs into the back of the cluster to read the oil pressure with actual oil. So I'm going to tear this cluster out of here and see exactly what's going on. I'm guessing 
there's got to be a small line or maybe just the fitting needs tightened up but we'll get it going so I think that's going to uh, conclude this video for today um, I'm really glad the shower works and that instant hot water propane heater works really good um, uh, I wanted to mount it inside instead of outside the bus because I'm pretty sure the weather would mess it up. And uh, as long as I open the back door, hook everything up, we should not have anything to worry about. So I like it. I'm glad it works. And I think I where I have the settings now with water on max and the heat almost all the way up, that's going to be the perfect shower. So that concludes this episode. Thank you all for watching. See you next time. Next video gonna be painting right gonna be painting the bus it better be call me out if not thanks y'all